Hey everybody, it's Allie Edwards and I am back here at my table today to do a little walkthrough of the projects that I worked on in 2023 as I get ready to start 2024. This is your first time visiting my site or my channel. Welcome. I love to tell stories and take pictures and bring them together in sometimes really crafty fun ways and sometimes really simple straightforward ways. In this video I just kind of wanted to do a quick flip through of the different projects that I embarked on this year. Some of them finished, some of them unfinished as I get ready to dive into how I want to document or what kind of projects I'm going to be doing in 2024. I don't think I've ever done a video that looked at each of the different things together like this in one video. And the number one thing that I want to say to you as I get started is that as you watch this video, I don't want you to have any thoughts of um, competition or feeling like you didn't do enough. Whatever you did was probably enough for you. And I've had years where I've done more and I have had years where I've done less. And the biggest thing is, is what I want you to remember is that this is my job, right? This is what I, I do professionally. And I probably do a little bit more than most people because of that. So as you are watching me flip through these different projects and talk about the projects that I have done in the past, or uh, I did in 2023, I would love for you to simply think about is that project a good fit for you this year? Is that something maybe you would want to embark on this year? Or do you want to do something else or a version of something else? So that is what I would love to invite you to think about. All right, so what I, I'm going to start with, this year I did a combination of some specific project albums that have a beginning and an end, or almost a beginning and an end. I did a travel album about all of our Dave Matthews trips, so we'll flip through that one. I did my One Little Word album, which I've already done a flip through, but I'll do a quick little one on here too. I did, let's see, what else did I do? I did a Halloween album this year. That's something that I don't do uh, every year, but I did do that this year. So we'll do a flip through on that. Of course I did December Daily, which I just finished up. So each of those ones specifically are beginning and end projects, right? There's a start and an end point. The other one that I did that is kind of along those is this year we, I think it was this year was the first year that we started doing story play. And story play is essentially, um, it has four different topics that we spread out over the course of the year, including day in the life, which is, I used to do is just a standalone project. So within story play, we do four um, themes, and then I've documented them in here. And I think one of them is also in another one too. So we'll talk, we'll flip through that in a couple of minutes. The other two albums that I have here, I have six by eight albums that hold story kit stories that I've told using the story kit. So we have a subscription that you can participate in. That's a monthly kit that includes usually a single word jumping off point. And we can talk a little bit more about that when we dive in here, but I still use that for just annual storytelling. It can, I flow them in and I have two um, a volume one and a volume two of my 2023 six by eight albums. Plus you can see some other things that are sticking out there that still, I, I still want to tell. The other thing that I did some of this year too, is I did have a nine by 12. Some of these are from past years. And actually, why don't we, let's just start with this one. So this is a nine by 12 album that I think I started a couple years ago. You can see this is from 2021. And anytime I feel like doing a, larger project. So a nine by 12 size project or something, you know, six by 12 or something like that. I pull this out. So sometimes it's based on other projects I'm participating in like these. This is from 2022. These were some layouts that I did for scrapbook.com. You can see I always have empty spots in between these don't I don't even think about those those don't bother me. Uh, this was from story kit. Uh, the, I think the together story kit. I love opportunity for big photos, right? Nine by 12 is fun for that. So there's a few different ones. I think this was, that was from 2022 too. So just kind of going back. This was one I did where I just had a bunch of 12 by 12 layouts that I did little photos of and added them all together, which was a fun way to see that. Uh, this one was from 
something about home. You can see, I, I like the opportunity to bring in the divided page protector sometimes, even if I'm not doing project life. So that was some 2022. That's also some 2022. This was from, this is a story kit. So is this one. So pieces from the story kit. So this album itself has some things from 2020, 21, 22, and um, 23 then. So here's a few different ones. There's Most of these are uh, not like a week at a glance, but they're one whole story. So I've got ING word cards, you know, just about what are some of the things that were happening right now at that point. Here are some photos of Betty. That was in 2022. Uh, this was from a story kit. So just talking about some of the people that are important in our lives. This was also a story kit. It was the work story kit. So I told a story about different things that I'm doing related to work at this point in my life. Blank spaces. Um, some of our family went to Universal Studios, so I did a page about that. This is also from the story kit, so taking whatever pieces were included in the story kit and using them as a jumping off point. Um, this was a fun one, too. This was about getting together in the summer there. There's one about saying yes, a bunch of flower documentation. Here's one that I did just a little story about right now. This chapter of my life is called July creating my own journal cards there. Here's another one. So this is from the Facts and Feelings story play. So I did do a larger, um, some larger documentation with the story play themes. This, this was the theme of Facts and Feelings. So I have a variety of different little things that were happening in this season of life. Uh, this looks like October, I think is when we did that. Uh, here's a story that I told about Simon related to this was his Eagle Scout ceremony that happened this past year that was delayed. Got that in there. This was um, a book club adventure in the summer. So I really loved doing some of these nine by 12s. I didn't do a ton of them this year, but I did enough to remind me that I really like the opportunity to do some in bigger sizes. So sometimes I choose to do them in the six by eight size that fit into these albums. And then sometimes I choose to put them in the bigger one. So this is just the kind of the annual or ongoing um, album. Again, that doesn't necessarily have a beginning and an end. Love how that turned out. Oh, so cute little bit of interactivity happening there with the big plastic page. That one was really fun. Bringing in the sewing machine there too. And here's one that I did. This also, let's see, this is with some of the things I think from the, um, one of the scrapbook kits. So we have 12 by 12 scrapbook kits that we do quarterly also. So some of the products are coming from there. Love doing the circles inside of the page protectors there, cutting those down and then having two big, full page photos. This makes me just flipping through this one in and of itself makes me want to do more nine by 12. I just, I love the look of it. I kind of, kind of feeling like maybe I'm into the page protectors again. I don't know. You know, there's an ebb and a flow. We got to, we got to ride the flow right on that. This one was from the hobby story kit. So adding this in there, I think I really liked having all those little squares on there. Uh, one about volleyball. This is, I need to do some more about volleyball and that you'll see some of the pieces when I look at the six by eight. Um, but there's some other stories that I haven't told yet. I haven't done <clears throat> Anna's eighth grade graduation, Audrey's eighth grade graduation, um, and then the beginning of high school and, and their volleyball experiences. That's something as well. And then this was one that I did for the present story kit talking about our Thanksgiving this year. So a couple things to note about this one. What I <clears throat> want you to see is that it's fun to have, you know, the large photos with the divided page protectors, especially if you're somebody that likes working within those. This is also one, you know, it's not only 2020, 2023, right? There's a few other ones in there as well. So I plan to just continue adding to this one. I might end up targeting something like this, like where I have a blank space. Now I can, I'll, I'll, tar I'll pick a story that I want to tell, maybe one, an another volleyball story and do a big photo and then fill in some of these pockets, not really caring whether it's 2024, 2023, 2022, that sort of thing. So that is the nine by 12 album that I keep. And as soon as this one is full, my plan is to just start another one that can hold, you know, these, these sizes of, of stories that I want to tell. All right. So let's take a look at the two 2020 
23 six by eight albums I have. So this is the one that I started. These are essentially like story albums, right? That, that I use the story kits for, or I use some stories by the month things. Um, here was the beginning last year. I did a whole little beginning thing and, you know, little introduction to the album. These are then from story kits. This is the open story kits. It's talking about beginning again in 2023. And I'm just going to kind of flip through, um, some of these here opening. That was the theme last year. Lots of volleyball around here. I had started doing the three, using the three, three things cards in here. You can see that I forgot to keep doing that past April. It's all right. There's lots of other stories that are told in here. So again, most of these are coming from the story kit. So if you're a story kit subscriber, you will probably have seen some of these other ones. You may have seen if I did, you know, one off YouTube uh, videos or things like that as well. This was a fun one that had flip ups. This is where you can see like some of the influence of December Daily and the outside of the page protectors play can come into that. This is from the story kit too. last year. XO was the um, was the second story kit. That was fun to play around with that play around. That one's got a card coming out more volleyball. Again, this is the season of my, of my life. This was a fun one where it's just um, a little bit of what I read on vacation. So I've got that in there. Sometimes I also try to do things where it's just, it's not, you know, it's not complicated. It's just using the pockets, right? So this little story about driving these guys to school and the shifts and, and those sorts of things. Um, same on the back, just a short little story about Simon and his roommate going into a picture of the daffodils, right? Not, it doesn't always have to be, oh, here's my whole spread. It can just be, I got a photo of daffodils that I like, and I'm going to stick that in there. Um, same with these guys here, just talking about doing morning marks, talking about kids and the teens living here. This is so this is in March 2023. And you can really see I, I feel like in the beginning, it's nice for me to go back and look at this because I don't always remember how I started last year. So it's I really like seeing how I was using this I was doing micro stories in here, right? I was adding in little shorter stories. Uh, and I think that as I as the year continued on, I forgot that I was doing it like this. And I was thinking that I needed to do fuller page photos or those sorts of things. But I kind of love uh, seeing this just as it is. So it's a good reminder to me. A little trip that our team took there. Um, then we've got some more story kit things. There's about talking about the different foods that I was making last year. So this is from the make story kit, different little things that were being made coming into, this is probably starting into March working out in my yard. Oh man, I love seeing this. Yeah, this is really, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Makes me, makes me want, <laughs> makes me want to set it up again and get started. So then I've got like a little bit of April beginning here. And then it's where, this is where it starts to get a little, a little choppy. So I've got like a story about my mom right there. I had added this in there to fill that out. I have a couple more. This is a currently story kit. These pages like this, I'm going to, I just need to adhere back to back. So that will finish that off. Um, some more currently or right now things that we were into back in April. This is Simon moving out. So a big story about that, that happened last year. Um, I love seeing this. Like I, it's so easy to forget even within, you know, the last year of some of the ways that I was doing this or the different things that I had in there. These are different things about high school. Here's one that says add pattern paper, just some things that I want to incorporate, including some volleyball stuff. Uh, I saw a play with Katie, um, just that kind of stuff. So those are things that I still would like to add into these two albums. So that was album number one. And then let's look at album number two, which is going to be mainly story kit stuff versus um, less things like you saw in that one that were kind of monthly. Like I started doing almost like Project Life-ish in there, but then I kind of stopped doing that. And part of the thing that, one of the things that happens for me is I end up, you know, diving into other projects and having other commitments. And so I, yeah, that's just what happens. I don't need to make excuses for it because you'll see that I did lots of things this year. But what I like for you to see is that there's just so many different ways you can do it. And it doesn't have to be a specific way. It can be as specific as you want it to be. Okay, so this is July. And so these pages haven't been adhered back to back. So 
in these albums, I often work outside of the page protectors. Um, and in the story kit classroom, I do process videos for all these. So that's where you can see how these actually come together. Um, that would be in the, in the story kit classroom. So these are ones that I need to adhere back to back and then trim down. Actually, I might try to do that today too. Um, some more work stories. There's another one with the, all the things on my desk. You know, you saw, you might've seen the other one in the nine by 12 album where I showed finished projects. This is like little squares of, of me working over the years or over the last few years. Um, I did a few different ones like that this year and I kind of love looking at them, like seeing, seeing the work all come together. So last year I did daily pages for a couple months and that was really, really fun. I loved doing that. That was a good, that's actually something that I could share too because that would be part of what I did last year in these little field notes. So I did, it looks like I did three months. So I did May, June and July last year. So I can flip through those two. Um, all right, that was super fun. Here's one that just needs to have its holes punched in there. Um, definitely loving there with the backyard picture. I love those full page photos. If you are new to me and you are seeing this or if you've been around a while and you just maybe missed it, last year I did do a workshop called Start Here and it's about design formulas for memory keeping and that, sh that workshop is available on the site and it really takes you through my thinking process of how I approach shape shape based jumping off points for my storytelling and it's all organized and it's got a big menu and it kind of walks you through how do you how do you start where do, where do you start in the process of building pages like this so that's called start here and I'll, I'll link that for you guys below again these empty pages here these just need to be adhered back to back and then it will flip a lot easier so that's on my list of things to do today we did a big camping trip to Lake Shasta with the girls that was super fun see I love that man I've got to remember I love those two by twos going in here to campsite here's one that I did in a big circle we visited grandma with my niece and this is Anna's handwriting on there that I just scanned in and put in there that one turned out super cute too um, this was a good one. This was a story about Anna and her, uh, glasses. I think maybe I, maybe I did this one in the start here workshop. That was pretty fun. So that's all stamping right on top of the photo. Some different ways to play around here. A little story about Anna and homecoming and then took the girls to a concert. I actually did more than I thought I did here, which is kind of great to see. And these are, again, using the story kits, right? The story kits as a lens through which to tell different stories of my life, but you still get the kind of, you know, seasonality or the through the year sort of stuff. Again, that'll get back to back. Um, this was from the comfort story kit. I did a big heart there. A couple of photos of Betty. Current comforts. There's a be here now. This is one that needs to be um, added in. So kind of the last few ones of the year. This is also from the comfort story kit. And then present was our last story kit last year. So here's one of those projects too. What a gift. I think I'll probably end uh, with this one. So again, that's something on my list of things to do is to just go in and get all of those adhered back to back. So those are my two story albums for 2023. Let's real quick, just take a peek at those daily pages. So daily pages is something that is, um, run. It's a project that's run by Kristen Tweedale, the awesome ladies project. And she's the one that, really kind of spearheads this project. And last year I jumped in again for May, June and July, and it was fantastic. I don't know if I'll do it again this year, but I really loved doing it. It's just such a fun way to have a little creative exploration. It doesn't have to be complicated. You, you'll see in here, there's a bunch of times where I just did, you know, stamping or I just did handwriting. It's like these little micro stories. Um, and a great way to use up some of the products that you might have that you really like too. So sometimes I'm, you know, writing and documenting things. And sometimes I'm like, yeah, it's Friday. <laughs> Lots of stamping though. That was, that was a really fun way to use stamps. You can see that I did little adhesive, um, sticker tabs along the edge. This one says just breathe on there. I took my baby to high school tonight. How about that? I, that's probably, that's probably one of my favorite, uh, ones. That one just says in bloom. 
this the this little project really gave me an opportunity and lots of currentlies in here too to to be playful and this you know it's it's just another way right it's another way to tell stories and another way to use your own creativity that one says um thank you may and then june my June short stories here. And sometimes I was more playful than other times, right? That was kind of fun to use up some of the supplies that I had uh, and then to go into just using my brush pen. So I loved that also. Currently, every Monday, Kristen does a currently. That one's got a just smile, did a little circle in there. That was fun. Some stamps, Some <laughs> me and Katie talking to each other. Notes to self. I really love the mixture because I really like writing and with the big handwriting on there using the brush pen. So I like being able to mix that in. We'll stop for flowers. Love we'll hold this together. A couple just thoughts about, you know, random things that were happening on that day. Another currently. These are super fun to look back on too. I love, love seeing those. This is a photo with a, with a, like a summer bucket list in there. That's on my walk. Just a big photo, full page photo there. Just keep on telling the story. You are doing great. You don't need to understand it. Just keep moving forward. That was from Wes Anderson's Asteroid City movie. This was just some play with extra stuff from my uh, mink machine there. And then I like doing the like the little goodbye at the end. And I think this is a good reminder, like here, you know, it, you don't have to do the whole year. You don't have to even do the whole month. I think it's fun to do the whole month, but you don't have to do it consecutively. You can jump in and out of it, and it can be a really... Um, fun way to be doing some sort of documentation. And I, I think a lot of that is listening to what you need, right? What do you need in this particular season? So we've got the currently there. This one would be summertime, right? So we're doing spending time outside. Big Friday. There's another currently there. Bringing in some mixed media. So these are painted pages that I was working on. Another painted page. I think this was a similar time when I was doing the, maybe started the fodder challenge. So, which is another mixed media fun thing to participate in. And so I had some of the pieces from that. This is when I went with my book club overnight. Um, let's see, there's another one that, that was part of the fodder challenge too, drawing those things out. Little tag, there's a, just fun stuff. This became a good way to document that project also. And you can see then I just kind of ended in the end. That was the end of July, but I didn't write a like a goodbye to July that time. And some of these have pages in the end, but I just moved on to the next one. And so, whoops, I did July before I did June. Sorry. Here's, oh wait, I already did that one. Okay, good. So you saw all three of them, right? We just did them all. Okay. All right, so let's move into some flip throughs of the other projects, those projects that had a beginning and an end. And in case you thought I forgot Week in the Life, I didn't. <laughs> I grabbed that one too. But I want to start, let's start with the story play. This is another thing that you can uh, participate in if you are interested. What I mentioned this earlier that it is, story play has four different themes for the year and invites you to do some different documentation. So the first one with story play this year in 2023 was day in the life. So I've got my intro to my day in the life with some observations. And then this year we use the lens of color to document my, our particular day. And so what this is what I've got here. So I've got the blue and the yellow and the red. This was a fun way to approach this uh, pink, green, there's my orange, my white, just a different way of looking through the lens and a different, literally a different way of looking through the lens of your camera, but also using a different lens to tell the story of one particular day. Then we also had a photography theme. So we will be doing story play again in 2024. It will have uh, different themes that I don't remember off the top of my head right now. It will have uh, the day in the life one as well. So we've got talking about photography and things I love about photography and why it matters to me. So telling some of those kinds of stories. So very directed storytelling in these story play kits. Um, in directed storytelling, meaning invitations to tell specific stories. And I really like how these turned out. And these could have easily flowed into my uh, 2023 6x8 albums over there, but I wanted to have give it its own home. So here's another one where I 
that was just blank there. Um, for the photos, I also did imperfect photos. I focused on some imperfect photos and added those in here and told little stories about each one. And then we did an in my hands prompt of things that I picked up around the house, right? Just things I pick up because I have lots of teenagers. Um, here's a story of the photo. This was a photo with Betty and I on our paddleboard in the summer. Uh, facts and feelings, then that was another one of them, right? So we had day in the life, we had photography, we had facts and feelings. Telling a little story about Simon, going to the antique fair. Another one, this was about Anna and some things from eighth grade. She moved into high school. Then the other one we did was little moments. And so here's some of the photos from that talking about the moments, the moments matter. So these kits, the story play kits have um, three by four cards and then have some papers like this and then some other little embellishments too. But that's a, it's a fun way to just focus your storytelling, um, more little details on there as well. And so those are my story play things. I think we may encounter those in a couple other places, just like we saw some in the, in the bigger ones too. So that's story play. So I'll be doing that again. Then... Let's see, let's do a quick, just look at one little word. So one little word, let's talk about timelines with these. So story play happens four times a year. So that, so it's kind of spread out. So you're not, you know, it's, it's not a huge commitment in terms of um, what we do with that. And we do each, each theme, we have a week for that theme and we do blog posts and talk about different things related to each of those themes that are all included. One little word, which here's my one little word album for 2023. Again, this has its own video that you can watch too, but one little word is a year long project. It's just starting right now. If you're watching this in real time, um, starts in January, you can really jump in at any time. And we usually leave the registration open until I think March or April is when we've done it in the past. Each year I pick a word that is a word that I develop a relationship with. I have a year long conversation with it and I document that experience. And the class, this, this album here is specifically rooted in the prompts of the class. So each month we have specific prompts that we are inviting the community and the people who are participating in the workshop to respond to. We have a live zoom call each month where we come together and talk about how things are going. Uh, we have a team of, mentors that are kind of leading the way, leading the way imperfectly. Um, so this one gets done one month at a time, one month at a time with a very specific prompt. It doesn't take a lot of time. It's simply, you know, coming into the classroom, listening to the prompt, and then deciding how you want to approach the documentation. So this one, again, is set up monthly. So each month it has, it's got June, and then going into July. So this is definitely a personal development project all about me, you know, what things are going on in my own life, um, how the prompts bring those things out, the things that I'm documenting, the things that I'm thinking about related to my word, all that kind of good stuff. So this is something that you can join now if you're interested in this kind of a, of a year long project. And people also do this in lots of different ways. There are lots of people who don't do an album for this project. They'll just work on it in a journal. So if this isn't your vibe, uh, you're still more than invited and welcome to participate and do it in uh, any way that suits the season of life that you are in. So that's one little word. Next project that I do annually, and I do it once a week each year, and I've done it once a week each year for a long time now is Week in the Life. And for the last couple of years, I've done Week in the Life in a 10 by eight album. So this is the same size I do December daily. I can't remember what size I'm doing this year if I'm doing 10 by eight or I might be doing six by eight. I'm not sure, we'll, we'll, we'll find out when it comes around. But this is a look at, so we have a kit for this. Um, we did do a class this year that's called Storytelling with, with Week in the Life, which is a, really like another one of those foundation classes like storytelling with week in the light or storytelling with December daily, where I talk you through like how I think about the project, right? And how I'm thinking about the documentation and how I'm, how I approach it and some of the different ways that I've approached it over the years. But this week in the life is literally a deep dive into one week where you are going, doing a deep dive into each day, my goal when I'm doing this project is to capture rhythms, uh, rhythms within the season. And 
it's a project that I love coming back to again and again. This year in 2023, I did a lot of really big photos, as you can see here. Um, I also used my larger camera for this, but people use their iPhones. I've used my iPhones lots of times. Um, and it's doing a deep dive. So lots of photos from the same day, um, collecting pieces of ephemera from that day, right? This is all uh, related. That's all Monday. So this again is one week and this is like the end of my week with a bunch more photos. And then it moves in. Actually, there's more. See, Monday, I always have Monday. I always have the most photos. That's all Monday. More Monday. More Monday. And then it goes to Tuesday. But man, I haven't looked at the I actually haven't looked at this since I did this project last year. And I think it did. Did we do it in May? Let's see. When was it last year? Last year was April. So we usually do it in the spring. It's kind of our spring project. Um, so cute. Just a little card on top of there. Um, yeah, a look at our everyday life in this particular season. So lots of photos, specific journaling here. This was ING word invitations. Um, trying to, you know, include all of my people, finding all my people in different spots. Uh, also, I think this year I invited them, my kids, to send me snapshots or send me one photo each day. And that's what got flowed, flowed, so got flowed into that template there. So this is all photo paper. This is outside of the page protector. This is my full just journaling of kind of the basics of what happened over the course of the day. So that's, that's part of what really makes this one in particular a deep dive, right? A deep dive into one, one week to really capture the season. And it's kind of fun to look at this compared to like, you know, or alongside the nine by 12 or those six by eights, the story albums, they're, they're little stories, right? And all those little stories come together to tell a big story. This one is a deep dive just into one week. So the, that's the beginning and the end. I start on a Monday, I end on a Sunday, and I have this going back, I think, to, what is it, 2005? Is that right? It's, it's a long time. I've been doing it for a long time. And some of my most favorite photos have come out of this project in particular, just really the, you know, the basic stuff of life, too. So I kind of love flipping through this. I Like I said, I haven't looked at it. Again, it's fun to see what things are the same and what things are already different uh, just, you know, six or nine months later or two. Lots of, lots of photos, big photos. And when I do a project like this, I set up a formula for myself that I follow throughout the album. So each, so when you come to Thursday or when you come to Friday, I'm doing the same thing in each place. So if you look in a story album, each layout is its own individual thing, right? Here's a layout that's with this particular story. And then the next one might have a different um, you know, look completely different, right? It's got a different design. I'm doing different other playful things. In a project like Week in the Life, I like to keep it really, um, really tight. Tight could be the word in terms of the formula that I follow. Uh, because when I have this much content, when I have this many photos and these many words, it's significantly easier, makes it an easier approach for me when I am able to just follow the formula. So I know I need this many photos. I know I'm going to do this many enlargements. Look at my cat. So cool. Um, in the office. And then I always have fewer photos by the end of the week. But since I've been doing this, you know, I've done it for so long. I have it for, you know, when Simon was a little kid to where Simon ha lives in his own house now, you know, it's, it's been, these are definitely some of my most favorite because they're so reflective of what our everyday life looks like. And it's a nice alternative. Like if you are somebody that likes the everyday life documenting, but maybe you don't want to do a full year of that this year, you don't want to do, you know, a monthly or weekly project life sort of project. And you'd like a little bit more, You'd like a beginning and an end. This is a great project for that. And you can see sometimes I just don't have things to fill them in. That just happens too. So this is Saturday. Volleyball. More volleyball. That's the season of life that I am in right now. <laughs> that was a full tournament there. But so fun to be able to have these pictures and to be able to look back on what it looked like for us. And in this particular year, we were at a tournament that whole weekend too. 
but I love it. Okay. So that's week in the life. So we'll be doing that again. We'll do this project again this year. Um, it usually happens in the spring. We usually release the collection in March. Um, so you can look for that to come as well. Okay. I think the next album that I did this year for looking at it from that kind of it's totally possible that I'm forgetting something too. So let me know if I'm forgetting something that I did. The next project that I did went along with our travel release. And this one, all of the details on this one are included in our travel class that we did this past year. And um, I put together that the travel class is a collection, I believe, of different people doing travel albums. That's how we, it's called. I think it's called Start to Finish. That's what we've done the last few years. And so Aaron and I, my husband Aaron and I have been, we're big Dave Matthews fans, and we've been traveling to see Dave Matthews in a couple different, at a couple different venues for a number of years now. And what I wanted to do with this year's travel collection was make an album that holds all of those different trips. And so that's what this is. Um, we will, we're going to continue to go see Dave this year. So I think I'm going to need to start another album because you can see how nice and thick this is. So this is another album where I chose to do a, make it a little bit formulaic because I knew that the thing that was linking all of these together, right, is, is going to the, you know, traveling to these different places. And I think that I do it kind of We'll see. Let's look. Uh, but here I have like a table of contents. So it shows it goes from 2013 to 2023 till the beginning of 2023. We saw Dave after this as well. A big story that kind of outlines, you know, and, and intros it. In that, and then yes, okay, I do have a very specific formula. So what I ended up doing for this one is I have a full page, then I have the set list because we see Dave um, in Mexico. And then we also see him in Washington State at the Gorge. And at both of those um, events, he plays, they play three nights in a row. And so we, these are the set lists that I downloaded and then printed out. And then I did song lyrics on transparency running through the mink machine for each one of these and then I'm just filling in the pockets. I also did the little two by twos so I could have lots of space for all of those and then I end it with a full page photo. So sandwiching content in between two full page photos is something that I love to do. And that's what I ended up doing for this one. And then I still had fun playing with some of the embellishments and adding those onto the front photo there. So you can see this is, um, which one is this one? This is 2014 at the gorge, little things that I wanted to remember. This is a blog post that I wrote then that I ended up adding in there and just a little bit of embellishing here. Uh, so this is a great formula that you can follow if you are documenting a bunch of trips maybe that you've made in the past that you haven't documented or that you want to have all together in one place. This worked really well um, for me for that. And this is definitely one of those projects where it takes work, right? It's work to print out all the photos. It's work to come up with some sort of a system that's going to simplify it for you a little bit. But man, this is probably, it's hard for, everyone's always like, what's your most favorite thing? Going to Dave concerts is one of my most favorite things to do. So being able to have all of these memories in one place is magic. And I haven't looked at this one again either since I did it. Because a lot of times for me, I put these projects together and then I put them away because I'm moving on to the next project. So I love being able to go back in and look at these, this combination of um, Mexico and Washington State stories and different screenshots that I had, different things I was able to pull from my photo archives. And it just keeps going. We've seen, I think I've seen Dave over 30 times um, now when you include all of those uh, each each night of of concerts. But it's so, it's just something that we really, really love to do together. So giving it a special home um, is fun. It's really fun. And so yours might not be travel. You may have something else that you just do every year. Maybe it's how you get together with family on a birthday or, you know, who knows what it is that a camping trip, that's kind of travel too. Um, but yeah, following that same formula, finished this off, gave all of these photos a home. Some of these photos that show up in my past Project Life albums from, you know, trips that we have taken and those sorts of things. But I just love being able to, to look back here. And I especially, again, I love those two by twos. I don't, I don't know why I always, I don't forget them in the big projects, but it's sometimes just in those, those like the story kit projects, I think I forget about them uh, more. Oh yeah, we went to Portland too. So some, that was another one another time that we saw them. Some of them have tickets and some of them don't because some of them I've already added into other projects. 
And then Mexico. That was last year. Yeah. Awesome. 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 Okay. So if you want more information on this one, this is in the start to finish travel class. You can get all the details. I have process videos. I walk you th through the whole thing of making this particular album. And in that class, it's not just me. You'll get other, um, travel albums as well from other people. Okay. So there was that one. Then the next project that I did this year, we had a Halloween collection this year and it was super fun. So I decided to do a compilation album of Halloween's through the years. And so that's what, these are ones that I found um, using our Halloween collection. We'll have another Halloween collection this coming year, but what was super fun with this one is I was able to start out with some photos when I was a kid. And so I have a few, um, I don't have as many as I have of Christmas as a kid, but I had a few Halloween ones and I was able to add those in again. Again, with this one, I ended up following a semi-specific formula, most of it starting when Simon, my son, was first born. And so his following his Halloweens over the years and formula here being using this template, the what I want to remember template. And then I added that in, but I still gave myself space to play. I did little shakers. This was kind of the beginning of the shakers and so many shakers that I did in December daily this year. But again, love being able to see all of these things together in one place, right? I can go over to my bigger albums that I've been doing since Simon was little, and I can find bits and pieces of these stories, but I'm telling a new story by having all of these together in one place to really see uh, the evolution of all of the Halloweens. And again, this one is out, both outside and inside the page protector. So that's something that I like to do. Um, having a combination of both things there seems to work really well for me. Sometimes page protectors, sometimes not the page protectors. I love the full page photos still. I mean, that's something I don't think that I'm probably ever going to stop doing that. But I really love the full page paired with the smaller ones too. So the contrast between the size and the photos is something that um, I appreciate too. So just flipping through here. So this then, I believe this is part of a workshop also. I'll have to look and see what, what it is called. I can't remember um, off the top of my head. If you want to see the full like step-by-step -step of me putting this together. Um, but yeah, so I haven't, this doesn't, this one does not have 2023 in here. I think 2022 uh, was the last one. So for this, I need to decide, am I going to continue adding into this one? I, th I could probably fit, I could probably fit 2023 in here and then maybe I will start a new one there. Okay. I knew I was going to forget something. <laughs> so something else that I do and have been doing for a number of years now is called Just Right. And Just Right is a $5 a month subscription that we offer. And with it, it comes two prompts each month. And Just Right is designed to literally encourage you to just focus on the writing. And uh, I don't know, I think I've done hundred and some of these, if I remember right now over the last few years and have continued to do it. So each month, again, there's two prompts and you, in that you get a PDF that has the, a writing prompt and then some inspiration related to the, whatever the topic is. And then I include my writing on a separate page that you can read if you want, or you can just focus on this. Uh, but here's all, this is, this is, I just have mine in a three by, in a, eight and a half by 11 binder. And I've just print them out at the end, you know, after I do each one. And so this is something that I do two a month. And this is also some of my favorite documentation that I've done or favorite just writing that I've done. I love that it can be, you know, I can take this and I can add it into a scrapbook page if I want to, but it can also just be a way of learning about myself, right? A way of processing that doesn't have to do anything else with being creative or, you know, getting messy or doing any other things other than thinking specifically about uh, the prompt and responding to this. So this might be something also that you are interested in this year, or this might be you know, this might be the year that you are interested in this kind of a thing too. So anyway, 
this is just right. All right, and then the last big project I worked on this year is December Daily, and that's the most recent one I did. So I do have a full walkthrough here on the on YouTube and the blog for you if you want to see that. The walkthrough that I did with the album right now, besides also having videos for every single individual page in here, is just has music. So I think I'm probably let's we'll just do a little quick a quick flip through. If you don't know, and if you're watching this for the first time, December Daily is a project that I do every December, and I do one story per day for a total of 25 stories, and I work on this project in December. There are lots of people in our community who work on this project um, after December. Sometimes people work on it in November, the year before, uh, the you know, right before the next December is coming up. Um, for me, as you can see with the number of projects that I tend to embark on, um, Getting it done by the end of December is is my goal and what I like to do because I move on to the new projects. But here's a look. Again, this is a 10 by 8 album. I've done this project in 4 by 6 albums. I've done it in 6 by 8 albums. I've done it in a couple other random sizes. I've done 10 by 8 for the last couple years now. I think this is my third year doing 10 by 8 and I'll probably switch it up next year just to keep things interesting for myself. But I love this project. This is a part of the way that I experience December. Um, it gives me something to focus on outside of all of the other things that are going on. Um, I love the stories that come out of it. I love being able to look at the albums uh, year after year. And it's just simply a reflection of how we live our December and what's happening. And it brings me a great uh, deal of joy to work on these. Just love it so much. So this year, wrapping it up, oh, this is supposed to be tucked inside. Um, so you can see I have a combination of things like very Christmassy things, but also if we go somewhere, like we went and saw Macklemore this year, so I got a whole big thing about that with, with words and photos. Um, but love it. Love it so much. And then I always put in our holiday card and then into Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Here was my Christmas Day storytelling this year. So wow, that's a lot, right? That's a that's a lot of stories told, and that was in two thousand in twenty twenty three. Um, I've been following a similar rhythm to what you've seen here for the last few years in terms of the documenting that I've been doing. But prior to this, I've done projects like Project Life where I do, you know, weekly documentation. And I'm still kind of considering what I want to do uh, for 2024. And actually, before I came on this video, I was planning for sure that I was going to do a 9 by 12 like weekly Project Life. Um, and I still might do that. I kind of, I started setting it up, but I wanted to, to go through all of these today so that you could see uh, see them and, and before I move on to what I might do for 2024. But I want to say that I really loved just seeing the six by eight and like looking at how I was doing this in the beginning of last year, where it was doing it more, you know, like I had some smaller stories mixed in here. I really liked when I saw that. So and that was using that was like here, um, the page protectors and the, you know, just slipping in different cards and having different pictures go with it. So I'm going to think on that a little bit as I, uh, get ready. I, if you're in one little word, you may have heard me talk in the intro video for that workshop about the gift of January. And I'm really trying to lean hard into that this year and not rush through January, but use January as an opportunity to really like clean up, um, get intentional about, the kinds of stories that I might want to tell this year, which will still be everyday life stories. It'll still be in this sort of way. But I think, I guess the main question is, do I want to, do I want to commit to something that has a cadence that's weekly or monthly? And I think that, that, um, coming into today, I thought for sure I wanted to do that. But after I looked at all these today, I'm not sure. So I'll be back with another video, uh, here soon to let you know what I, what I decide or, or don't decide for 2024. Thank you so much, though, for taking this little walk back with me uh, through 2023. Some of you out there may have done all of these same things right alongside of me. Others of you may have popped in and out for different projects. And that's kind of the beauty of our community is that we are here simply to celebrate stories and to simply celebrate storytelling in whatever way you end up doing it. Our community happens to enjoy kind of the crafty process of bringing those words and photos together. And you're always welcome to pop in and out 
out and join us in a project and then say no to the next one and then maybe try it in a future year. Uh, again, thank you so much for joining me for storytelling in 2023 and let's move on.